If kids learned about Mark Ripito before they did Jeff Cavalier, this entire industry would be a much better place. Chest up, shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody. Your home for gains and brains. You guys might be able to hear in the background there's helicopters flying around. Apparently tonight is the Oscars in LA, so they gotta get all their shots of the celebrities. Like, if you're still watching these award shows, seriously, what is wrong with you? But today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of the starting strength method. What? Now, as you guys know, I have criticized Mark Ripito before, mainly for his absurd video on the trap bar. There's no uniformity. There's no uniformity. There's no uniformity. Acting like it's poisonous or something. But aside from that, he has more pros than cons. He is an icon, if we're being totally honest, in the lifting game. Not the modern fitness social media industry, but in actual training, he's up there. So let's begin with pro number one here. Mark Ripito himself is on the Mount Rushmore of lifting, like I mentioned. I believe that both starting strength and practical programming, as you can see here, I believe these are both fundamental books that novice lifters and athletes even should be reading. And the reason being is that both books are, one, they're well written, they cover a lot of information, and probably the most important thing with both of them, they teach the fundamental basics. They talk about how training, especially for strength, is a full-body endeavor. We see so much in the modern bodybuilding, social media, aesthetics culture, everything is isolated. But even if you do wish to isolate a single muscle group, which you guys have seen me do on more than one occasion, safe weight training is a full body activity, no matter how you slice it. And on that end, starting strength and rip really preach the basic compound exercises. One more! Ugh, you got one more! Oh, you, yeah! Badass! The basics are king. If you want to get strong and big as a straight beginner, all you need is a barbell, a rack, and some plates, and I guess a bench. These lifts put more total size and strength on you, and they are lifts that must be mastered by novices. If you can master the basic barbell exercises, you can master just about any exercise in the gym. And this again is an issue with the modern, trendy social media culture. If you put these guys in front of like a high school football team, they couldn't teach them how to squat properly. Like that's how bad this is. These guys all play hopscotch on the machines and then just up the dose and get bigger and bigger, which is fine, you can do whatever you want, but for the average person who's not doing that, you need to learn what actually works. You also are going to lack the low back, core, grip, foot, ankle, balance. You're going to lack all of those essential athletic variables if you spend most or all of your time on machines. Basic free weights work for enhanced, natural, young, old man, woman, it does not matter. Another pro of the starting strength method is their high strength standard expectations. They want you to be legitimately strong, and there is a con to that, we'll talk about that soon, but for the time being, it's mostly a pro. How many times in your gym, guys, in your commercial gym, have you seen anybody in their deadlift four plates? Or cleanly squat 315? I mean, there are guys I've seen in the gym, they've been in there for 5-10 years, they still can't even get comfortable under like a 225 squat. That's how out of touch and under-trained the general lifting populace is. Make no mistake about it, the guys who do the starting strength novice program for one year are going to make more gains than the average commercial gym schmuck does in five years following influencers on Instagram. Because of this obsession with isolation and all these trendy, goofy exercises, a lot of kids in the gym now, especially new kids, they think anybody who's remotely strong is automatically on gear. And that's not true. They think it's like a mirage. They don't understand it. And this doesn't only go for training advice, this also goes for diet. As we know, the popular crop of fitness YouTubers now think it's normal, or they'll tell you that it's normal, to be able to shred and make PRs on a weekly basis. That's not happening. I mean, you just, you're just not big enough main gaining, whatever bullshit you want to call it, it's a myth. Ripito, on the other hand, is brutally honest about what it takes to get big and strong, and that is eating more food. So that alone is really a massive benefit. And then the final point, just a quick one, strength lifting, instead of the big three squat, bench, and deadlift, it is the squat, the press, the overhead press, and the deadlift. So it's kind of like a hybrid of powerlifting and Olympic weightlifting in a way. I just think it's cool. I've watched a guy in their gym overhead press 405 pounds, which is just freaking ridiculous. So that's cool too. But before we continue, ladies and gentlemen, 
it's the algorithm. <laughs> Getting into the first con with starting strength. Too dogmatic in exercise selection. So as we mentioned a moment ago, their reliance on kind of like the big six or seven core lifts, that is very good, especially for beginners. But once you get out of that novice phase, especially with dominant weak points on your physique or in your musculature, you're going to have to expand your horizons. If you look at Ripito's program, the Texas Method, for example, this is an intermediate program, still only three days a week, and you do what, like eight exercises total? Once you get intermediate strength and above, I think stimulus to fatigue for a lot of us on his programs are going to become an issue. I personally think a four-day program, something like 531 or conjugate, something like that, is going to give you a little bit more leeway in terms of more exercise selection and more total volume for your training. If you guys want to check out the current program I'm using, you can click the button in the top right. I will break down my program for you. Now, the next con of starting strength, we alluded to this earlier, they're fat asses. I don't think I've ever seen somebody in Ripito's gym who's under 20% body fat. Rip is honest about having to bulk, yes, but he becomes overly dogmatic with it like he does pretty much everything else. Rip's solution to any plateau is just to dirty bulk. Kind of stuck on presses right now. I'm 5'9", 200. What are your numbers? My next workout should be 161 for um, 3x5. In my squats, I'll be hitting 375 for a set of five. My deadlift is at 400. All right. So this is this is what I would do. I think that uh, the body weighs the problem. I think you need to gain 10 pounds as quick as you can. And you need to grow an ass. And you need to grow some adductors. And you need to grow some traps. And all this means body weight. In Ripito's world, you can make progress forever by becoming Mrs. Puff and just blowing up all day. But for most people, that's going to have its limitations. Number one, plenty of lifters, younger guys especially, a lot of novices, people getting into the gym. They have absolutely no desire to be 20 plus percent body fat. That's part of the reason they joined the gym in the first place to avoid that. And number two, a lot of lifters with health concerns, especially older lifters, probably isn't too smart for them to be 20 plus percent body fat year round and still gaining just for health purposes probably not ideal ripito also is still to this day as far as i know a proponent of gomad a gallon of milk a day which again if you can do that go for it but two-thirds of the population is lactose intolerant so there goes that if you look at the starting strength guys it's dad bod central which is a good segue into the final con of starting strength it's hard to sell. And this is especially for beginners in the social media age. Now, Ripito has made a lot of money in the fitness industry, and deservedly so. The point, though, is that his program to the most fruitful, like, eager-to-spend audience doesn't even reach them a lot of the time. I started lifting in 2015, I believe. I didn't even hear about Ripito or any of his books until, I think, 2017. It took me, like, two full years to learn about that. And I've told you guys before, I wasted the first two years of my training pretty much doing nothing because I was following Athlean X and doing a bunch of stupid exercises because I didn't know better. But I wasn't marketed starting strength. And that's not exactly their fault, but I do think they could be better suited to the times, so to speak. So Ripito, if you are watching this, I know you got Brie on your staff, I think, the girl. You better put her in all the videos. You probably should just hire... I mean, I'm sure you don't have a guy with abs on your crew, so you need to hire a guy with abs... Uh, decent biceps, and just tell them to do fives. Have them low bar squat for a few sets, take some photos, videos of it, have them deadlift. That's going to help your brand out. I know Ripito's opposed to that idea, but it's going to make him a lot of money. An old guy deadlifting heavy is pretty badass, but without curls and abs in it, no young kids are going to watch it. Seriously though, if kids learned about Mark Ripito before they did Jeff Cavalier, this entire industry would be a much better place. So that is it, guys. The pros and cons of starting strength. Tell me what you agree or disagree with down below. Click like, click subscribe. Tell me what you want to see next. And I will catch you next time.